Human beings are not ants. We don't know on our own how to live together in large groups. We need rules for that. To create these rules, there are two rule-making systems. That's what we call regulation. One is social regulation and the other is technical regulation. Everybody knows social regulation, it's called politics. You start learning this in school. You even learn about changes over time, then the subject's called history. You can study it in all its variations, policy, political journalism, political science, etc. You can study history, modern history, recent history, or even history with a focus on the development of democracy in ancient Greece, but nowhere, not even in engineering courses, do you learn what technical regulation is as a general rule, with very few exceptions. And that is not good. Human beings are not ants. What you never wanted to know about standardization, but definitely should know, is something I won't tell you in this podcast, because I'm Lee Leibrand will. Do you know, democracy means you get to help shape the future by helping to shape the rules by which the game will be played in the future. And you can do this not only on a societal or social level, but also on a technical level. This affects all areas. You probably have very little to do with whether a screw fits into a hole and has the perfect thread, but the technical regulation is nonetheless important and relevant for you. Because technical regulation is much more than screws and bores. My aim is to give you an overview over the various aspects involved, so that you understand why it's important to at least know a few basics. Let's take the example of economic and trade policy. This is usually prepared on a technical level, worldwide. We are not here alone on this planet. Dean is Germany's representative member at CEN for European standardization and at ISO for international standardization. You can probably imagine what it means when a country establishes its own technology as a global standard through an ISO standard. So if you want to stay on the ball internationally or prepare the way for your own idea, you should know the mechanisms of technical regulation. This also means whether you're operating on the political level or on the economic level, you should know the strategic importance of technical regulation for your own company or your own country. Thinking about this in a different way, this idea also applies to marketing, right? You can think of standardization almost as a type of overarching B2B communication or advertising tool. If you're doing research work, you should know that if you want the results of your research to find their way into the world, you need them in a form that the world can understand. And sorry, but academic research papers tend not to be. They usually remain in scientific circles. And it's important to be aware of this, especially if you are in a field that is not yet completely underpinned by standards. Where are there gaps in standardization from your perspective? Or even an area that is particularly creative, exactly where you would least expect it, standardization can be incredibly beneficial. One example. In the area of open source hardware, a specification, Dean Spec 3105, was recently published. This Dean Spec doesn't specify what you are allowed to produce open source, but rather what lies behind it. The requirements that products must fulfill in order to be called open source hardware. Open source hardware has gained a lot from this. For example, with this Dean Spec, it's much easier to anchor open source hardware in Horizon Europe projects. And at the beginning, the stakeholders within the open source community thought, Dean and open source, this doesn't fit at all. <laughs> Or does it? Taking a look from an elevated level, if you want to change the world, it's important to be aware that not only the social, but also the technical regulation has to be addressed. There are overarching standards, for example, those that deal with environmental management systems, in case that is a topic of interest to you, and specific standards that include technical details. You could, if you like, consider on a strategic level which technical details for environmental protection have not yet been sufficiently covered in standards. All of these documents are written by people and they can also be changed by people. If you see something that needs doing, then go for it. Standardization is not predestined to be a certain way. Standardization is a living, 
breathing cultural asset that needs to be used, adapted and updated. Standards exist in order to make our life easier. Once upon a time, it started with standards being about screws and the corresponding drill bores and to ensure that everything fits together. Back in the day, standardization was truly for the technical nerds. But those days are long over. In the over 34,000 documents in Dean's body of German standards, almost every topic imaginable is covered. Of course, screws and bores. But also things like environmental management systems, quality management systems, or even tattoo services or open source hardware. Standardization supports us in so many areas of our lives. And all of this and how it all fits together, this you simply have to know. And that is why um, <laughs> I'm glad that you're still listening to me. And um, I'll be using little snippets like this here in the Dean Young Professionals Network to teach you the basics of standardization and Dean. My name is Amelie, I studied mechanical engineering and I've been working at Dean, the German Institute for Standardization, since 2016. Because you can hardly learn about standardization anywhere, I've put together this little series for you. Human beings are not ants. Here you will discover everything you never wanted to know about standardization, but definitely should know. There will be a wealth of information over a series of episodes. I promise you it will never be boring. If you enjoy the series, please spread the news. I'm excited to share this information with as many of you as possible. Stay curious and see you soon. <laughs>